Tonight we're going to be looking at how to use a listener in Java. A listener is the uh, tool that we use to actually interact with the user, and we're going to start off by using a button listener or an action listener for that using Swing in Java today. And we're starting off with that, as you can see right here inside the chatbot panel, because the panel is the biggest part of the Java Swing program where we interact with the user. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go over to our constructor, and as you can see right here, I have a call to a method called setup listeners. This method is called inside the constructor because when I create my object or my panel itself, I want to make sure that I'm able to uh, get my listeners initialized and prepared right when my application itself starts. So I have my setup listeners method call right here. I go down and actually have my setup listeners method. And the listeners method is where I'm going to create a listener um, reference for every listener that I need to actually use inside the program. And we'll start off with using a button listener, as I said. To do that, we type in the name of the button, and the name of our button we have is sample button for this project. And then I do a dot, and I do add action listener as the method call. And for parameters, I'm going to actually create what's called an anonymous class. It just creates a brand new instance of this right there. And this is one of the many ways to actually create a listener. We'll talk about some other ways another time, um, such as, for example, implementing the interface as part of the class itself. But for here, where I only have a couple buttons, this makes sense to actually create the, <clears throat> to create the listener as part of this method right here. And so I'm going to do new, and I'm going to do action listener, open and close parens, and press enter. And that brings us uh, that line down. Just do a set of squiggles for that so it matches up. And I need to add a method for this. Because this is an action listener, it requires a method to be part of it because I'm implementing an interface right here inside my code. And so the method I have to add is action perform. It's a public method of avoid type. And again, the method call is action performed. And as a parameter, it takes an action event. And because this is a mouse, what do we do with a mouse? We click it. I'm going to name my event click. Open and close parens again. And as you can see, I have a method right here. So my sample button dot add action listener and I pass to it a new action listener with a method call or method definition of action performed, passing it a click as a parameter. And as you can see, this is actually truly one single line of code, as denoted by that semicolon right here. This could actually be extended out all the way, way over here, off on the other screen to actually fit on one line, but that would look really nasty. So of course we want to make our code line up and look pretty. Inside my action performed, this is where I put the information that I want to see happen with my button click. And so in this case right here, we'll make it so we can see this very easily, we'll do a quick pop-up window so we can see that it actually occurred. So we'll do a JOption pane. So I'm going to pass it inside my JOption pane. I'm going to uh, pass it a reference to the actual frame itself so I can have the, the pop-up window centered on the frame rather than simply centered on the screen. And so to do that, I'm going to go to use my base controller, and then a dot, and then to get my base frame, which gets the actual frame object itself, so that now has a reference as to where I'm going to place that pane that pop-up window, and it's going to go in reference to my frame, and the message will be I click the button. And again, into the semicolon, just like always, and we'll go ahead and play this application really fast. As we can see, we have our lovely little um, application starting up right here, and I'm going to move my window up here to the middle of the screen, and again, we have that reference right here where I'm passing as a parent for that J option pane, the base control to get base frame. So that means that when I click the button, the pop-up window is going to be owned by this frame, this window right here. And when I click it, it should say I clicked a button. So I'll click the button, and it's centered right here, as you can see, inside the frame, saying I clicked a button. Said OK. I'll move my uh, window down over here to the bottom left, click the button again, and again, the window itself, the pop-up window, shows up inside the application rather than simply being in the center of the screen itself because we have right here in our code, an owner, instead of having a, no, a null owner for our pop-up window, our owner is now done by the actual frame. This application right here has the control of that, and it will show up now in the center of the frame itself. So we can actually control where we place our pop-up window a lot more easily now. Again, reviewing what we do. In our um, class that is the panel that we're using, we want to use the private void setup listeners method, which is that helper method we use to actually put all of our listeners. This way, for each of our buttons, we can create a listener. In this case, I have a sample button that I've got right there. I call the method add action listener. That is this uh, method that allows us to put a listener for that individual button inside the application. It takes as a parameter for the action listener a new action listener object. 
This is owned only by the button, and it requires the method action performed with an action event parameter on that. The name on this doesn't matter. I could use action event A, but because I want to use good naming conventions throughout my entire project, I use the action, the action event of click as the name because we are clicking the button. Anything here inside my squiggles of the action performed is what will happen inside that actual button click. Usually this will be a bunch of method calls or a method call on another object. And so again, when creating a listener, we put the method calls inside here in our squiggles. And in order to make sure that this actually happens and is, this listener is available when we start our project, we want to make sure that we have up in our constructor, in this case chatbot panel, we have a call to the method set up listeners, so the listeners are set up immediately upon the creation of the panel object. Hope to see you next time and have a great day.